Hey Tom, this is Paul and Josh. I uh, want to show you your plank. We uh, snatched it off of there. You'll notice since we knew we were we are uh, replacing the plank, uh, we get them off really quick. We use a core drill and we drill around the fastener. So that's why it looks like Swiss cheese. And uh, we protect the edge so that we can use the edge to copy the new plank. One thing that we noticed, uh, we're working on this uh, section up here uh, where we've got the uh, the stem cap. This actually, on a lot of boats, is one piece stem and cap, and this this shape would be rabbited in with a router or routed in to the uh, end of the piece, and it would be one piece. Yours, though, uh, it was neat when they were building it. They they were in a real hurry to build these boats, get them out the door as quick as they could. So they came up with the idea of just putting the plank on here, leaving it proud by that distance that you see on my on my hand and then taking a plane and shaving the plank off even with the stem very quick and easy way to do it and then they'd come back and put this stem cap on as a n narrow or thin plank and they'd bend it in place probably steamed it and bend it in place it's made out of white oak and then they'd take a plane and bring it into the same shape the same bevel uh, at which you can see the bevel, same bevel as the as the angle of the of the bow, which changes, of course, from almost vertical to almost flat as you go back. So that's cool. And so um, this piece had been uh, somebody had run into something and damaged this piece. That was the reason for the epoxy. And uh, uh, the other thing that we're concerned about as we're going through this is most of these screws have. Are just crumbling. Uh, there's there's a there's an example of uh, gosh there's almost no screw left right there, and um, so just wanted to give oh and here's some here's some pieces that are crumbling off. So this is not normal. Um, this is maybe uh, some electrolysis or maybe somebody had this boat in salt water. And there's some stray current and it was in the I don't know it could be in fresh water and stray current, but um, we're a little concerned about that. Um, what we're going to do, we've got a plan of action. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, pull about a dozen fasteners from throughout the boat just to see if it's all over the boat or not. If it is, we've got two choices. You could apply the money that you've, we've already got committed to this process towards a new no-soak bottom, or a cheaper and probably almost as good method, not, I don't know, We'll, uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about it almost as good. We'll talk about the value later, but um, the uh, other method would be we would add additional fasteners uh, to the bottom. So, for example, you can see when we get to a frame, we got three fasteners. Well, we would, and the fastener holes are much smaller here than than what I've drilled around. But what we would do is we would go between and add new stainless steel uh, fasteners. Or uh, originally this was silicon bronze. We can even add silicon bronze fasteners, but if you have no plans for salt water, there's no reason to go to silicon bronze, the extra expense. So, uh, you'd have about, we figured you'd have about a third in the repairs, you'd have about a third of the cost of a new soak, no soak bottom in repairs. But you know what, that could last you a very, very long time, um, and uh, probably the rest of my lifetime. Uh, or at least the, the time I'm going to be in business anyway. I'm going to retire someday. But anyway, uh, and the business will continue. But, uh, you know, that probably, so that probably lasts you five to ten years, um, somewhere in that range. Uh, and, of course, if you have a new no-soak bottom, then that's going to last you 20 to 30. And, and you and I won't be worried about it. We'll be laughing at whoever owns the boat from up in heaven. So anyhow, um, 